hey what's going on guys welcome back to the channel In today's video we're going to be taking a look at all your comments and suggestions about what you think PUBG should do in terms of the respawn mechanic that they're going to be testing in the new tiger map which is most likely coming in an update 12.2 in about two or three weeks depending on if we get test server or not all right now first thing if you're watching this video and you have no idea what i'm talking about if you go to my youtube channel and you go to the community tab this is where i post different uh, polls, questions, just random updates that aren't big enough for maybe a full video. Now we could go ask for your guys' opinion on this and I pasted a player IGN's tweet saying that the map is supposed to release around the 22nd of June, which is gonna be likely test server. So that means in one week, we may see it on the test server and then two weeks, we'll see it on live server. But again, that's yet, yet to be confirmed. And I just kinda wanna get your guys' opinion on how you thought PUBG should or would implement the respawn feature and whether you were obviously excited for it or not. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my input on how I think they're going to do it and how I would like for them to do it. All right. Now duet fam says mainly a new exclusive weapon, but I would like to see some new mechanics like Haven has for AI. And I love the idea of a new weapon. I'm not a huge fan of exclusive weapons. If I can be quite honest, I don't like how on Miramar you have the links and it's not available on any of the other maps. I, I don't like when the game does that, but I'd obviously always welcome new weapons. And the new mechanics things is interesting because I, I really liked how they put AIs in Haven. And it's going to be interesting to see how they carry over that testing from Haven into the other new maps. Quick shout out to Mark Enright says, you are killing it, man. Been subscribed ever since you destroyed me in PUBG and I watched the clip on the report. Keep up the great content. Yo, thank you, Mark. Shout out, man. Much love, dude. Uh, Wallace Lee says respawn will be fine for this game if this feature is implemented during early phases only. Suggest up to phase two so that the respawn players have enough time to loot and gear up, etc. It should only be in solo. I mean, it should only be in duos and squads and not solo. I agree with pretty much everything Wallace says here. I think it should be in duos and squads. I don't think there should be a way to get back into the game in solos because that kind of defeats the purpose of of it being a revive feature. You know, it's not like a gulag or a buyback. And I also agree uh, phase two or maybe phase three at the latest uh, where it should no longer accept new revives or new player bringbacks, however they do that feature. That way the mid game is still healthy. The late games are even better than before. And there's not a complete and total hectic in game where people are still parachuting in you know, phase five and phase six when everyone's vying for the last few pieces of hard cover. Laser has a good one here. He says, I hope the implementation is realistic and takes a bit of effort to execute. Would be nice not being plane related and continuing to have an existential crisis on how many planes player unknown has. Uh, yeah, I feel this on multiple levels. They did make a good change to the uh, parachute redeploy recently. Those planes now typically fly higher. They have different lights indicated on it so that you know if it's a player plane or if it's a loot drop plane. But but yes, I think there's far too many planes right now. And it would be interesting to see how else they could implement that uh, by keeping it realistic. You know, is it a helicopter from Paramo? Is it just a you just drop down from the sky instantly sort of thing? You know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they do that. Now, Olsen and I give some insight comparing to Apex and, and Call of Duty, which I think a lot of us are really looking at Apex, Call of Duty, and even Fortnite to compare to see what kind of respawn mechanic we might see. Olsen Knight says, I'm not sure it'd be best for revives if it's a loot based item for revives or if it's a special area like Apex or the Gulag COD or something completely new. He's excited about the possibilities of not having to watch his teammates get the dinner without me, all because some Jimmy was more concerned about his KD. Ha ha, let's grouch. <laughs> My man, OC. I agree. I, I don't think it should be loot-based. I think that would be a terrible decision, And but more, more on that later. But for me, this is what it's all about, not having to watch your teammates get the dinner without you. Now, obviously, if you make a grave mistake and you get outplayed, well, yeah, there should be some repercussions about that, but it, there is something fun about earning your teammate back into the game and keeping the entire group that you're playing with, you know, uh, into the game, not just someone sitting off on their phone messing around because they died early. So the comic recorder and Sh Shantanu both had a similar idea where it was kind of like a revenge revive system where you'd have to kill the person that killed your teammate in order to revive your teammate. I'm not sure if that would work. Like it might be really hard to program something like that in the game because you got to remember, like, I could knock you 
and then my my teammate could flush you and so how does the game no count who technically killed you and then if we get killed by another team does that mean you no longer get the revenge revive or something you know that, that can be a little tricky i think for PUBG to program but interesting thought process Sea Biscuit says they should add a respawn system that is like a revive kit or something that only works for the first few phases. It's a terrible experience having to sit there for 20 minutes, and it also sucks when two or three people in your squad die at the beginning and you're screwed for the rest of the game, aka you basically end up killing yourself and just restart in the lobby, which again further muddies the middle game experience. A lot of teams drop out, and so you just miss on all, all kinds of potential action because teams are just backing out because one or two of their teammates died. Um, but again, I'll reiterate, I do not like the idea of a respawn kit, something that's RNG found. I think it, it should be available to everyone, regardless of the skill level, you should have the option to do it. You have to earn it, but every player should have the option. Now, I, I really like this one here, uh, some Sch Schopenhauer, I'm probably butchering that one, but he says, I don't like it, but if it has to be a revive, it better be hard to get. So I appreciate this. He's saying that he like he's already not interested in the system, but if it's going to be in the game, let's at least make it hard to get where you have to earn it. And I think that's the best way to look at it. You know, you may not love what PUBG is trying to do, but as long as they're trying to keep it grounded in realism and making teams work for it properly, it could end up being a really fun mechanic. So don't knock it to your try it sort of mindset. Christian says, honestly, a revived respawn system for PUBG takes away what the game is meant to be. PUBG being so unforgiven is one of the things that made the game unique and stand out from others because you only have one chance. I know this system will be for map for one map only, but still, I'm against it. But if they somehow implement it in a decent and fair way, then I could get used to it. Just my two cents. Christian taking a page out of Schopenhauer's book and saying that he's not interested in it, but if it's going to be there, if it, as long as it's done in a decent and fair way, then, then he could get used to it. Again, I think that's the way to look at it. Another thing I would kind of uh, just say, look at the flip, so flip side of this is when Christian says PUBG being so unforgiven is one of the things that made the game unique and stand out from others because you only had one chance. But if you really think back, when PUBG came out, H1Z1 was still really popular, right? That was like the BR before these BRs. And H1Z1 did not have a knockdown revive system. Once you got killed, that was it. You were done. So one could argue that PUBG actually made it easier by adding the knockdown revive system. They made it less forgiving, or excuse me, they made it more forgiving, but people still flocked to PUBG over H1 anyway. So again, just keep in mind, PUBG hasn't always been on the forefront of innovation and they were the first ones to actually introduce a revive system. So it's not crazy to think that they couldn't pull off a, uh, a revive or a bring back type system properly. One of the biggest concerns is questioned here by the People's Champ. If you've been paying attention, you'll see we've experimented a bit recently with what respawning on a battleground looks like, and Tiger is a big reason why. Now, this is a quote from PUBG, and what the People's Champ is saying is, I do not want to see Tiger be like the one that was tested in labs. For those that didn't play it, I'll link uh, some gameplay in the top right of your screen, but the PUBG Labs Revive mode was on a timed system. So basically, the way it worked was this. You have four teammates. Uh, if three of them die or any number of them die, as long as one teammate is still alive when the countdown reaches zero, all of the, the dead teammates are brought back into the game and you spawn with loot kits that you could customize while you were dead. So there was very little effort to earn the revive. All you had to do is be alive when the timer hits zero and then your teammates were brought back in. I will say that kind of getting down to the last like 10 or 15 seconds timer did get really intense especially late game but that's one of the drawbacks is that they let people still come in late game like phase seven you could still be brought back in so i don't think PUBG is going to implement it that way i think they were more or less testing just the coding and the features of actually having teammates coming back into the game and the circle is still closing like a normal battle royale but good point by the people's champ all right, and now we're going to swap over to Twitter and just see if we have any different comments here before I give you guys my final thoughts on the system. Now, my boy Odin, a.k.a. Chris, says, He used to be against it, but PUBG needs evolution in order to survive. He loves the hardcore aspect of PUBG. However, 
We're going to be playing in empty lobbies without change. He can adapt. If done correctly, a respawn system will be fun across all maps. Non-ranked risk versus reward. Hit the nail on the head back here. Risk versus reward and only in casual modes. This would not be something that I think anybody would want to see in a ranked style playlist hey, or in an esports setting. Uh, no good says my feelings are I'm torn. Obviously, fresh new maps are a good thing as it keeps interest high and makes content creation exciting. But we've already seen the impact that more maps and queues have on game health. And here's just one more log on the fire. If it turned out to be super awesome, maybe it can replace Sandhawk or Vikindi or swap it out for different seasons. But no good makes a good point. Adding another map to the queue. And keep in mind, we have another map following that later this year. So there's going to be potentially what? seven maps in the queue if they don't remove anything i, I think they're gonna have to remove some maps to make it work <laughs> blinktron says i don't want to see it in solos but i think it could be good in squad games to avoid having players back out or kill themselves so they can reunite with the squad maybe the team has to get four dog tags kill four players to be able to revive a teammate that's interesting Jufran references PUBG Mobile's respawn mode called Payload, where if one teammate dies, there's a two-minute timer. The surviving teammates has to collect that card within those two minutes and bring that to a respawn station. It's pretty much like Apex or like Fortnite. Zach said he actually did enjoy the respawn royale, which was in PUBG Labs. The system was epic because the clock counting down every time for a teammate to get back in made for sweaty and intense moments for the alive teammate to stay alive. And then Kyle says, respawns are much needed in some form, but it can't be too easy to utilize. Hi, Warzone. Would like to see some kind of system where you need to retrieve something from your dead teammate and take it somewhere for them to parachute back in. Good points. So I think the consensus is pretty clear that a lot of people who are against the idea of a revive are at least open to it as long as it's implemented properly. So I'll give you guys my thoughts on how I think PUBG is going to implement it. And then I'll give you my thoughts on how I hope that they implement it because they're not the same. All right. So first off, how do I think PUBG is going to implement it? I think they're going to make it a lootable RNG item in the game, similar to on Haven, how you have the, uh, the critical response kit that basically allows you to revive your teammate with a one second timer, as opposed to 10 seconds. It's a almost useless item that nobody ever gets to use because it's locked away in a respawn or excuse me, because it's locked away in a RNG, you know, crate. We have to find a little key on the ground and then you have to go to one of the different seven secret locations kind of spread out throughout the map. And then you have to pick it up and then you have to be next to your teammate when they get knocked. It's just it's too many RNG variables, in my opinion, to really make it useful. And I, I, but, but I fear that's what PUBG is going to do for this. I, I fear that they're going to have like a defibrillator kit. And instead of everybody spawning with one, which is what I think you probably should do, they'll have it be a lootable item on the map and you have to go pick one up and then, be, then be able to use it. And they might even limit it with like a battery life or a timer or something. So that's how I think PUBG is going to do it. I think it's going to be a, a lootable RNG system, which would not be fun. And I don't think PUBG would put in uh, respawn kits. I think you would have to respawn, parachute in, and then go find loot like you normally would in the beginning of the game. Now, how do I wish PUBG would do the respawn system is, is pretty simple. One of two ways, both of which are very, very similar. Number one, the dog tag uh, system seems to be very realistic and plausible whereby every player has a dog tag in their inventory, not in their loot box, but in their inventory side, you know, where you have like a utility belt in your clothing and whatnot. And if you die, your teammates have a certain timer where they can pick up your dog tag and a certain timer when they can get to a respawn station. The respawn stations can be spread throughout the map at every named city location. So any of the named cities, they could go there and there's a respawn station somewhere in say the middle of the map or the middle of the city rather so that it's kind of out in the open um you're gonna have to make an effort to get there you have to clear the city to make sure it's okay to do a revive the animation can be like whatever 10 or 15 seconds to actually call in your teammate and as in terms of bringing the teammate back in i think maybe it should be a flare 
but maybe like a, a green or a purple flare or something, something that differentiates it from a, a loot drop red flare. Uh, but I think the player should just come down, like pretty much appear out of the sky. I don't think we need any more planes traveling across the map. For one, that takes really long because if the plane starts on the other end of the map, then everyone sees the plane for an hour and then, then the player drops. And, and on top of that, there are just too many planes in the, in the game with the plane sounds and all that kind of stuff. I think that'd be too much. The alternative method that I would like to see is every player starts with a defibrillator and that would be in your inventory next to your utility belt. So it wouldn't take up lootable space in your inventory. And the defibrillator would have like a, say a built-in battery life that only lasted until phase two closed. After phase two closed and phase three began, it was out of battery. So you no longer could bring anyone back. And if your teammate got knocked and flushed before then, you didn't have to go take anything off of them. You could just use your one use defibrillator and boom, bring them back one time. So every player would have one defibrillator, which means unlike the dog tag method where you can only be brought back one time, every player can only be brought back one time using the defib, technically the same player could be brought back three times because if you're playing squads and there's four, you know, four teammates, three of your buddies could all use their defib on one person. So that would shake it up a little bit. It might kind of water down the system since the same person could die multiple times, as opposed to the dog tag where you could only die one time. But I, I would like to see one of those two, two methods implemented. All right. But of course, only time will tell. We've got about hopefully a week or two until we see it on test servers and or straight to live servers. We can get our hands on it and see how they've implemented it. I know that I'm just really excited to see the map too, above all else, because from everything that we've been hearing and seeing in the teaser images, the map looks like it's just going to be really great in Erangel esque map, which everyone loves. It's their favorite map. So I got high hopes for this. I just want to say thanks again for leaving your comments below on YouTube and on Twitter. This helps me make all these videos possible. And it's just fun to hear you guys' insight and thoughts about how you approach the situation compared to say what I'm thinking about it as. So, and as always, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a buddy, and make sure you're subscribed if you're new to the channel. We've got a ton of new PUBG content coming out every week for you guys. Most recently, we had the new ATV and Harley comparison. We paired those up against the dirt bike and the old motorcycle to see which was best. So go check that review out. I've got the PCS4 Pick'em Challenge video out about a week ago. And in another week, once we get closer to the deadline, I'm going to make a video giving you guys my ideas for the picks for the Pick'em Challenge to give you the hopefully the best chance at winning some esport points. And of course, if you haven't checked them out yet, my playlist for the Ultimate PUBG Guides has everything you need to know about being better at PUBG, from looting to using scopes to rotating to healing. I mean, everything you can need to know about PUBG is there. So go check it out. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.